The New England region is a set of very beautiful states, yet somehow they're not always the first ones talked about when someone dreams of their ultimate US road trip. Well, I can tell you that these very colorful and diverse states, they will give you a reason to want to visit these places. The six unique states that make up the New England area include Maine, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Connecticut. However, on this road trip, we're not going to be covering Connecticut for no specific reason. It's a great state. I've been there. It just didn't work out in our itinerary. Anyways, the other five states we're going to be checking out are loaded with so much history, culture, beautiful landscapes, and so much more. You can go to sandy beaches, to mountains, getting your fresh seafood, so many great things, amazing hikes in the Appalachian Mountains. I can't wait to show you what's all in this itinerary. Before we hop in here guys, I want to mention that this video was shot around the end of September, so most of it you're going to see a lot of fall foliage, which is when I recommend to visit New England. It is one of the most sought out times to visit the New England states just because this whole region lights up in such a beautiful and colorful way. We did go slightly early for the peak fall foliage, it varies slightly per year, but the best time to go that we've figured out at this point is somewhere around the beginning of October. Some of the places we went to, the fall foliage was either just starting starting or it hadn't started at all. There's a few places like in Vermont that we'll show you later in the video where we did see some peak fall foliage. That said, this itinerary is going to be amazing no matter what time of the year you visit, although I probably wouldn't recommend doing it in the middle of winter because it's a lot of camping, hiking, and unless you like camping and hiking in the snow, it's probably not your best bet. The unique part about the New England states is that most of them are very close together. In order to see five different states, we were able to cover all of that in just 17 days. So you can really see a lot in a short period of time. We did our best to find the most efficient route for you guys that we're going to share throughout this video. And I'm really excited for you to see it because I think you're gonna find we covered so many great places while also having a pretty efficient route in terms of not going too out of the way to get to various places. So let's go ahead and jump right into this itinerary. We started out our road trip by flying into Boston. Even though our day one is in Providence, Rhode Island, Boston is a much cheaper airport for us to fly into from Chicago just because there's that many more flights. So we flew into Boston just one hour north of Providence, Rhode Island, picked up our rental car and drove down to Providence. I want to mention that the first five days of this itinerary, we actually had a rental car since we were going to be doing more city exploration. We were going to be just constantly moving from place to place and not as much camping. So that also meant we were in Airbnbs the first couple nights. So after we got our rental car, we drove down to Providence, Rhode Island, which like I said, is a one hour drive roughly depending on traffic. And we checked into our Airbnb and decided let's go explore all of Providence's downtown for the rest of the night. The good news about Providence, Rhode Island is it's a very walkable city. There's a lot of pedestrian paths and there's a lot of things to see. It's a big college town. So we walked around Brown University and then checked out a really good taco spot that was recommended by our Airbnb host and it was delicious and it was fast so we can get back to walking around the city. So that evening we, we walked roughly three or four miles around the city and got to know some of the areas, some of the different districts, just to get a better idea of what we wanted to do for the rest of the weekend since this was going to be our first weekend on the road trip. On our second day of the road trip, we explored more of Providence, Rhode Island, where we went downtown, checked out the Capitol building, we checked out some of the local national park areas downtown, as well as checked out more of the food scene because Providence has really good food in their downtown. So it was great to just walk around, get to know the city. We probably walked maybe seven or eight miles before finishing off our day. And I must mention that you wanna catch a sunset in Providence. The way the city lights up in the evening is really a magical experience. As you can see from these clips, it literally looks like it's straight out of a movie. The city really lights up with those golden colors in the distance. So find yourself a great spot to enjoy a meal in the evening and then walk around right by the river where you can see a nice sunset. So on day number three of the road trip, we make our way down to Newport, Rhode Island. It's roughly a 50 minute drive to get over to Newport, Rhode Island. It's a really short drive. As you know, Rhode Island is a small state, so you can get from place to place quite easily. So the first thing we did in Newport, Rhode Island was we did probably the most famous thing, which is cruise down the 10 mile drive road. 
It's a road where you can see mansions right along the coast, you can stop by the beach, and you can also go to Fort Adams State Park and explore one of the old forts there. So there's really a lot you can do along that route and you can see it in a pretty efficient amount of time. So guys, I wanna make a quick stop right here and just let you know that this is the itinerary that we did. We were able to fit in a lot, but it's obviously not everything you can do in New England. There are so many great things and there are so many more things you could have done on our route. In my New England road trip travel guide that I put together, I have a link down in my description below. You can go ahead and check out how how many other things there are to do. It covers this whole video in detail, more details for you, places to stay, other things to do along the route, and so much more in a very comprehensive travel guide that I know will be helpful for you if you're planning a trip. In the afternoon after we checked out the 10 mile drive, we went over to the Cliff Walk. You may have heard of it. It's probably the number two most famous thing to do in Newport, Rhode Island. Basically, it's a long, relatively flat walk where you are on the coastline, you're seeing massive mansions that are just going to blow your mind. It makes you wonder what these people did in their lives to be able to afford such massive, massive compounds right along the ocean in some of the most expensive places for real estate in the country. So it was a really cool walk to see that and it was also great to be there at sunset because it gave it this beautiful shine in the evening. So after staying the night in Newport, Rhode Island, the next morning we're gonna cruise over to Cape Cod, Massachusetts. This is a much longer drive than you would think. It's about two hours to drive from Newport, Rhode Island all the way to Provincetown at the end of the Cape. That brings you almost to the furthest point where you're going to have a really cool coastal town. There's a bunch you can do in Provincetown. What we did is we walked along the breakwater, which was about a two and a half hour round trip walk. I wouldn't even call it a hike because there wasn't any elevation, but it brought you out to this island that has the lighthouse out there, a bunch of sand dunes, and no other structures. So it's a really cool spot to hang out for the afternoon and then walk right back, right on the breakaway, which is a cool walk because you're walking right through the ocean and the tide comes and goes. When we first walked through, it was surrounded by water. And then on the way back, the tide was receding quite a bit so we could see all of the land coming out, which was a really cool sight to see in the afternoon. Of course, you're in Cape Cod, so make sure you make it over to one of those restaurants right in the downtown area and you get some fresh seafood, you're in New England, you gotta make sure you're taking advantage of all the opportunities to have awesome seafood. We had oysters, we had salmon, we had lobster, lobster rolls, all of this great food for lunch and I would highly recommend it. After spending the night in Provincetown, Cape Cod, you're gonna cruise over to Boston, which is about a two hour drive. There is a ferry if you weren't driving, but it's for pedestrians only, so you do have to take the long way and drive all the way back to Boston and spend the rest of the day in Boston. You could honestly spend multiple days in Boston. There's so much to do. It's a really cool city. Great, great, great food. I cannot emphasize that enough. A lot of great places to walk around and get to know this city. For us, we checked out Fenway Park because one of my buddies loves baseball. So after spending more time walking around Boston and exploring more of this great city, we made our way over to the Bell in Hand Tavern, which actually is the oldest tavern in the United States. And wow, I can see why they've lasted. Their food is phenomenal. Yes, it is maybe a bit more touristy because everyone wants to go to the oldest tavern, but the food was so good. I had lobster mac and cheese and that was to die for. It was so good. I recommend that if you're going. So on day six, we woke up pretty early and headed over to Deer Island. We were told it's a great spot to go walk around a bit and see some really nice views of Boston. You can see the planes flying in right in front of the city and it's a nice little hike. Well, you still feel like you're in the city. And then we were on our way to go pick up up our RV. Since we got our rental car in Boston, we dropped it off actually at the airport, grabbed an Uber from there. We had about four of us and split it to go to a place called Worcester, Massachusetts. Or Worcester? Worcester. Yeah, Worcester is how you say it. So it was probably a 50 minute or so ride. And I want to say maybe it was 80 to $100 for the Uber ride. So it was a bit more expensive, but we needed a ride to go pick up our RV. I want to mention that we picked up our RV through Cruise America. It's basically a chain of standard RVs. They're nice, but they're nothing with supreme quality. They did everything we needed them to do, but it wasn't anything, you know, out of this world like we did on our other road trip. We used RV share and we were able to get a really nice RV and we had enough people to split the cost where it was really cheap for us to really live the high life in something that normally would not be affordable for us. So of course, after we picked up our RV, we needed supplies. So we made our way over to a local Walmart. That's where we picked up all of our camping supplies, all of our food, all of our alcohol, everything we needed to get for the next few days. We didn't get enough for the whole 12 days that we were in the RV, but we got about five days worth of groceries and then figured 
let's go to Walmart again in five days from now in another state. That way we don't have too many things in the RV at once. After checking that box and getting all of our stuff, it was time to make the cruise over to the Berkshires where we were going to be spending our first night. And we stayed at a campsite called Camp Overflow. There are a lot of other options you can stay in this area. This one was highly rated and it was pretty close to all the places we wanted to explore. So on day seven, we started out the day by checking out Monument Mountain. It was roughly a two hour hike, really beautiful views. We were there slightly before the peak foliage, but in any event, it was still a beautiful sight to see. When you get to the top of the mountain, you can really see so far out. There were like flying baby falcons up there too. So it was a cool experience to be in that part of Massachusetts. You don't really hear of Berkshires that often, but there's a reason why you want to go and visit. They're really beautiful and there's not too many tourists there because not that many people I feel like know about it except people that are already in New England. So after checking out Monument Mountain, you can take a 50 minute drive over to Mount Greylock, which happens to be the highest peak in Massachusetts. So the nice part is you can drive if you're tired from the hike in the morning, you can drive all the way up to the top of the mountain. We were able to drive our 30, I think it was a 30 foot RV, all the way to the top without any issue. And then we could park our RV up there, walk right over to the viewpoints and hang out there for a bit. A lot of locals there will bring lunch and maybe have a beer. That's what we were told by our campground host. So the nice part was we were able to get a quick glimpse of what the highest point in Massachusetts looked like before making a relatively long drive, about two and a half hours over to Mount Monadnock where we're spending the night. One thing I do want to mention here though, guys, is this route is slightly different from the route that we took on our road trip. And you're probably wondering, why would we give you a different route? Well, the thing is, is we had a bunch of friends that were kind of coming and going throughout the trip, which means we needed to coordinate having airports built into the schedule. That's why the route is slightly different, but it's more efficient for you. So if you're starting and doing this route all the way through without needing to stop at airports, what I'm telling you in this itinerary is way more efficient for you. All right, so on day eight, we're starting out very early because we wanna do a morning hike. We're hiking to one of New Hampshire's most famous hikes, which is Mount Monadnock. And this is a very, very beautiful hike. It is strenuous. It is a lot of work to get up the mountain, but it is worth it for the views. Unfortunately, it's hard for me to vouch exactly how those views were because we went on an extremely foggy day. And so when we got to the top, we could barely see 10 feet ahead of us, which was a bummer but we still got great exercise. The trail itself was awesome and we were happy with it other than the issue that we couldn't see the distance. I've been told by people that you can actually see all the way to Boston from Mount Monadnock when it's a clear day. So hopefully if you guys are going, it'll be a clear day for you. So after you get done with a nice morning hike, it's time to head over to Green Mountain National Forest. So this is one of those spots I was just telling you about. Unfortunately, we had to skip this because we had to go all the way back to Manchester to pick up one of our friends. So it was a bummer, but it was something that had we not had to go back that way, we would have definitely gone to Green Mountain National Forest. So try and make it. I don't have too many video clips to share with you of this place, but just know that it is a great recommendation to check out. And there's a lot of activities you can do like mountain biking, hiking, skiing, depending on the time of year you're there, fishing. There's a lot to do in that whole area. It's a very beautiful part of Vermont that I hope you'll get a chance to see. So after spending most of the day checking out Green Mountain National Forest, it's time to do the cruise up to Burlington for the night. It's about two and a half hours to get there from the general Green Mountain Forest area. Since you've already had a very packed day, arrive at the Burlington campsite, plan to check in there for the next two nights. You can relax, maybe do a campfire, grill out, or go downtown and grab yourself a nice bite to eat. On day nine, now that you've got some rest, it's time to explore Burlington. Burlington is a very cool city. It sits right on Lake Champlain, so there is so much to do. For us, we checked out all of the city throughout the day. We checked out some amazing restaurants downtown. We went to some gift shops. We kind of just strolled around the city to get an idea of what the culture was like, what the people were like. I have to say it was an interesting time to be there because it was in the midst of a pandemic. And Vermont has been top of the list for maintaining their corona cases being very low so at the time it wasn't the best time to experience the city because a lot of things were shut down but it was still really cool to see it and then around dinner time there's a great spot right on the water where you can get some tables outside see the sunset right on Lake Champlain enjoy some good food good drinks and finish off your day in Burlington like that before heading to the campsite it's time to take about a 40 45 minute drive from Burlington to Stowe Vermont Stowe Vermont's a really cool city it's probably most well known for the Stowe Mountain Ski Resort a lot of people go 
there. A lot of tourists go there every year around this time of year when I'm filming this video, which is December, a great place to go skiing and snowboarding. Obviously we were there in September. So for us, we did a lot of hikes in those same areas. We actually hiked to the top of where the ski lift was. So we got to see what it looks like during the fall colors rather than what most people see during the winter. So many hikes in that area. It's a very mountainous area, very beautiful area. And don't forget to pick up some Vermont maple syrup. It is delicious. So the hike we did in Stowe, Vermont was to the Sterling Pond. It was a pretty strenuous hike for the most part, if you're just trying to do like a mild hike. Not super hard, but it was just quite a bit of incline. I really enjoyed it. And when you get to the top, you have a really cool pond to look over, and as well as a few lookout points that brings you over to the ski lift that I was just talking about, where you could see out into the distance where people are normally snowboarding. So a really nice hike. There's a lot of hikes in that area. So just know that if you wanna do a lot more hikes in that, those options are there for you. So after you get your hiking fix in, the nice part about Stowe, Vermont is it has a nice little quaint downtown where they have good restaurants, they have breweries, they're known for their breweries, so I recommend checking them out. Since we were there during the pandemic, a lot of places were closed, just like in Burlington, but they did have a really famous spot that you're able to get drive through beers. But since we did have our RV, we were able to take those beers that we picked up and head over to a spot once we parked for the night. After staying the night in Stowe, Vermont, it is now day 11, and it's time to make about a two hour drive, roughly, over to Forest Lake State Park in New Hampshire. So Forest Lake State Park, it is a very small state park. That said, it is really nice. Not many people go to it, or at least when we were there, we were the only ones for the day and a half that we spent in the area. And if you wanna take a little break from hiking, this is a perfect place to grab some burgers, grab some hot dogs, grab some drinks, grab some good people, head down. They have areas where you can cook. There is a beach there, so if you wanna go swimming and the weather's nice, you can go swimming, we did. And uh, just a lot of areas to hang out and enjoy it. If you're there during fall foliage, it is a beautiful time to see the colors changing across the lake where the trees are just running all along the borders of the lake and that is beautiful. Another great part is the locals, they were really nice. We had a couple encounters with them and they were so welcoming, so ready to give us tips on where to go and we really, really appreciated that because it gave us more of an inside feel of what this area of New Hampshire is like and what are the things we should do for the next couple days. So we spent the night in the Forest Lake State Park area. They don't have a campsite on the actual state park, but there are some RV parks really close to it that you can go to if you'd like to stay there. So to start out day 12, you'll drive about 30 minutes from Forest Lake State Park over to the Mount Lafayette Trailhead. So this is the most strenuous hike we did. It was a seven hour loop trail that brings you all the way up to the top of the mountains. Very beautiful, a bit tough, not going to lie, especially if you're a beginner hiker. We did have some beginner hikers with us and they're glad they did it, but they were quite out of breath. I mean, so was I too, and I'm somewhat of an intermediate, I guess. I've been hiking for about a year now, so I'll call myself an intermediate. It was a tough hike, bring a lot of water, bring food too, because that was our biggest problem is we didn't know how far we were gonna go up the mountain and then we ended up just sending it and going pretty much all the way to the very top. We're not gonna hike all the way up because we didn't eat any lunch before uh, making the trip up. We didn't know how long it was going to be. We kind of just winged this trail. And we didn't bring lunch, just only a couple granola bars. So always remember to bring some food when you're doing those longer hikes. So we did that and that took up pretty much the whole day. Beautiful views, a great spot in Franconia Ridge State Park. I highly recommend you guys check this place out. There is so much you can do. This is one of those spots where you could spend three, four, five days in Franconia because there's just so many different hikes, so many great views. And especially if you're from New Hampshire, you probably know how good this area is. It is stunning, one of my favorites of the trip. So after you make it down the mountain, after a very strenuous hike, it's time to get some food and call it a day. That took up the whole day. Head over to the campsite, get some rest. You can be fresh for tomorrow. So the first thing in the morning on day number 13 is you're going to cruise over about about 40 minutes from Franconia Notch State Park over to Crawford Notch State Park, where you're going to arrive to the trailhead of Arethusa Falls. This was recommended to us from one of the locals we met over at Forest Lake State Park. He said it's the most beautiful waterfalls in New Hampshire, and that is very true. It did not disappoint, highly recommend it. We were there just before peak foliage, so it was a beautiful time to be hiking in that area. The trail is not super strenuous, but there's a bit of incline. It's nowhere near like Mount Lafayette. Most people are able to do it. It's definitely a beginner hike, but you know, once again, it still it takes a couple hours to bring that water, be ready to see some beautiful views. So after you've seen those beautiful views of Arathusa Falls, it's time to make your longest drive of the trip, longest straight drive, which is about four and a half hours driving time 
from Arathusa Falls all the way over to Bar Harbor in Maine, or as they pronounce it, Bahaba. So once you arrive to Bahaba, you're gonna plan to spend three nights at a campsite there. So find a spot, you can unwind, you can unpack, you can set your camping stuff outside of the RV and leave it there. It's great because now you finally don't have to pack up and leave to a different place every single night. Obviously with an RV, it makes it a bit easier, but when you're setting up all your camping stuff outside, it's way nicer when you can leave it in one spot for the next couple days, which is exactly what you'll be doing. Leading into day number 14, you're going to be spending all day checking out Bahaba, Maine. There is so much to do in this beautiful and iconic coastal city right here in Maine. It is a cool place. The seafood is delicious. The people are super welcoming and there are so many natural beauties to see in this area as well. Since it's right next to Acadia National Park, you have all these islands you can see in the distance. It's great for sunrises, sunsets, you name it. It's a beautiful and photogenic place to explore. So spend that whole day really getting to know the place. There's a cool downtown to walk around and check out some of the gift shops, check out some of the great restaurants they have there and make sure to eat a lobster that first night. I ate my first two pound lobster and wow, it did not disappoint point and I personally don't like seafood that much but if you're here in Bahaba, Maine or anywhere in New England you need to make sure you're capitalizing on this opportunity to have some of the best seafood in the country. Leading into day number 15 get ready to wake up bright and early and by bright and early I'm talking about an hour and a half two hours before the sunrise to hike to what the locals recommend as one of the best places to see sunrise in the Acadia Bar Bahaba area. Sometimes I try and say it normal Bar Harbor, but it's Bahaba if you wanna be a local. Yeah, so make sure you're up bright and early, Mount Champlain. You're gonna to wanna to bring one of those uh, headlamps because it is pitch black, nobody's out at that hour, and you gotta be careful because you're walking up a mountain, and so, not a huge mountain, but definitely a lot of incline, you wanna watch your step, there's a lot of rocks, things like that. Even with a headlamp, I think we all tripped a few times on our way up, but it is so worth it when you get to the top, you can see all of Bahaba, you can see Acadia National Park, you can see all the islands in the distance, a really, really beautiful spot. We didn't even get to see the sunrise fully, but we were still so thrilled with what we could see. There was a lot of cloud covering, but the sun broke through for a little bit and gave us a nice little peek of how beautiful this area is. If you still have some energy in you after doing the sunrise hike, you'll wanna do the Ocean Path Trail in Acadia National Park. There's not too much elevation there. It's basically just a pathway that leads all along the ocean. You have great views of Acadia National Park. You can see the ocean, you can see boats coming by. A really great spot to do more of a family hike there and just maybe walk across the rocks if you want to as well. I will say there are so many things to do in Acadia National Park, so much hiking and you have a lot of options. We chose those two because it just made sense for the amount of work we wanted to put into it, the amount of time we had, and we really enjoyed it, but just know there are a lot of options in Acadia National Park. So you're probably quite exhausted after having a full day of hiking Mount Champlain, then the ocean path, and any other paths that you might have done. Make sure to grab a nice, hearty, great meal in Bahaba to finish your last night in this area. Leading into day 16, you have a three hour drive from Bahaba down to Portland, Maine, which is going to be your last full stop of this road trip. Another amazing city to get some of the best seafood in the country. Another great place to explore a beautiful city that has a lot to offer, a really good food scene. It's one of the oldest port towns actually in the country. And so there's a lot of history in this place. A lot of things have happened. And this is one of the older cities in the United States, obviously being on the East Coast in the New England area. And it is a place you'll want to explore, you'll want to enjoy and finish off your last day on the road trip going strong, leading us into day number 17, which is driving about two hours back to Boston, dropping off your RV, hopping on that flight, heading out after an amazing road trip. And so guys, that wraps up the 17 day road trip. What I do wanna tell you is there are so many things to do in the New England area. You could easily extend this trip by so much more and still not have seen it all. These are some of the things we highlighted, we thought were amazing. There are a bunch of other places kind of within the center of those states. We went around basically the, the perimeter, I guess you will, of all of New England. And so there's so much more to explore. And once again, if you can make it here at the beginning of October, that's when you're gonna see peak fall foliage. You're going to love it. 
I want to mention one more time for you guys, check the link in the description below. That's where you'll find a link to the guide that I created. The guide covers everything we have in here with more detail and it also covers a lot of alternate things you can do when you're traveling along this itinerary and so many more details to make sure you have an amazing trip. We have RV tips in there, we have packing tips and a whole bunch of other things that I know will be very beneficial for you. So make sure to check that out. And I really hope you guys have liked this video. You found it very helpful and enjoyable. And if you have any questions, comments, or anything, definitely drop them below. Would love to hear from you if this itinerary has been helpful for you. If there's other recommendations you would have included in here as well, that might be helpful for other viewers. And I hope to see you guys in the next video in my 21 day road trip where we explore the West Coast. I'm creating a very similar video to this that's going to have so many tips, tricks, and also a guide that'll teach you everything you need to know about road tripping in that area. So thanks so much guys. It helps me so much if you can hit that like button as well and also hit that subscribe button if you haven't. And we'll see you guys in the next video.